virgin most powerful radio sharing the gospel with clarity and charity i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier no they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger Friday, Matt Arnold's joining me I can't sit, Matt knows that I'm actually not taller than Matt He's sitting that's right. Oh, he's standing in a hole. That's cute. Okay. I want to just there say, we, yeah, there Matthew, that this is exciting because it's Friday. I normally like to do a little meditation on the passion. So I'm going to ask you, please do your own meditation today because I have a couple of guests today and I'm not going to have time to do that. But next Friday, I hope to be able to do that. But we have a very a full day here on our hour here with you. And as you know, every single day we start with the gospel. But I just want to give you some good news because the gospel is the good news. Amen. Well, yet last night, Richard and I, with this engineer, were talking to Stations of the Cross back on the East Coast. And they have given us that we're going to start broadcasting early November. Mm -hmm. And that's going to go to some stations like Boston. It's a 50,000-watt station that covers... Well, that's like KFI. It's like KFI in Southern California. This goes all the way to Canada and pretty much covers the northeastern part of the country. So thank you, Jesus, and thank you, our listener. Yeah, well, amen. Been, it's almost two years we've been persevering at Virgin Most Powerful now. Mm-hmm. January will be two years. Yep. But I want to get to some real good news, the gospel, because today's feast day is St. Luke. Luke. Yes. The divine, the, the physician, right? Yes, St. Luke so the Evangelist. We have special readings. And Matthew, could you be so good to share the gospel with us? Certainly. I'm going to hold this up for the YouTubers. I'm reading out of Terry's Missile, and oh. it's... It's completely falling apart. So Someone's going to send show, me a missile. It shows you out. that I, I suspect that his faith life is not falling apart because his <laughs> missile is. Okay? Uh, but a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. If a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. You know, Matthew, when I read that gospel, I always think of how simple our Lord has been teaching us to go out and spread the faith. I think of evangelization two by two. It's so much easier when you share the gospel with someone else with you. I find that to be the case. Matthew, you you love the Bible, I know that, and you've mm-hmm. done so many programs for St. Joe Communications over the years. But you know, St. Luke spent a lot of time with St. Paul, did he not? He was. He was a companion and a disciple of Paul, from my understanding. Yeah. So, so he spent so much time, and I think even St. Paul says it was so valuable to have him with him, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so really, St. Luke's gospel, too, has, you know— technical terms like a physician with an eye and needle and, Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, 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 sewing, you know, things. Right. It just shows, again, that he really uh, used some of the things that he would be familiar with to communicate the good news. You know, it's interesting, too, that uh, Luke was presumably a a proselyte. He was, you know, a Gentile Mm -hmm. that had become a Christian. And And it's interesting that his gospel is the one that uh, puts the most emphasis on female characters. You get more about Mary, you, you get a point more there. about Elizabeth, right. uh, Mary of Magdala, you know, Martha and yeah. Mary. This is all over St. Luke. That's true. And, and, you know, in the ancient world at that time, women were not held in very high esteem in pagan culture. True. And so it, it's, it's just one of those things to me that it's an affirmation 
of how Christianity was so emancipating for so many people in the ancient world that this man who's a Gentile and, as you said, a physician, a cultured man who would have been well-versed in, in the pagan philosophy of his day to so wholeheartedly embrace this new way of, of thinking and seeing that he really became, like St. Paul said, he put on the new man you know, and, and renewed his mind. St. Luke, pray for us. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Bishop Sheen, pull, pull Sheen ahead. I love Bishop Sheen. I can't wait for his canonization. As soon as I get word on it, you'll, you'll know. I'll be telling everybody I run into. Okay, this is an interesting comment, Matt, on persecution. Because okay. around the world, Christians are being persecuted. So here's what Bishop Sheen has to say. One of the great and mysterious facts that is not generally known to the world is that whenever there is persecution on the account of the faith, it always results in a vast catch of souls for the kingdom of God. Tertullian was right when he said, everybody's heard this quote, the blood of martyrs is the seed of the church. Mm. I want your take, but I just got to look at some places in the world like China, where the persecution of the church is huge. I mean, they won't let in certain parts of China, if you're 18 years or younger, you can't even go into the church. So they're underground, but they're growing. As a matter of fact, I saw the the statistic by 2040, which is only 21 years, 20 Mm -hmm. years from now, they're going to have the largest amount of Christians in any country in the world. Mm. And think of this where Christianity isn't persecuted, and it's nice and easy. There's no, it seems, yeah, it's the, lukewarmness. Yeah, by 2040 in those places, uh, Islam is going to be the dominant right. faith. But what's your take on that, Matt? <clears throat> well, I like what Bishop Sheen had to say, of course, and he quoted Tertullian. There's, there's a famous quote, and I don't have it in front of me, so pardon You're me for paraphrasing. Paraphrase it, yeah. But it's uh, from Hilary of Poitiers. Oh, oh, oh. Back when, uh, and it was during the Arian heresy. Yes. And, and he said that it is, that the, that the church's doctrines stand out uh, more clearly when they're challenged, that uh, that the church grows, you know, uh, when she's persecuted. And he said that the church uh, conquers all when she is abandoned by all. Wow. You know, and that's and that's a it's well to remember in, in difficult times when it seems like things are not going well. And I'm, I'm afraid we're going to have to share some sobering statistics. We do. That you have, you know, uh, I do. <laughs> holding in your hand right there. But remember, remember that that. Uh, you know, and for the chivalrous soul, I think it was Monsignor Robert Hugh Benson said that for the for the chivalrous soul that that a uh, you know a, a pathetic defeat can be greater than than a, a glorious victory. Isn't that powerful? Because he looks to the cross. Of course, yeah. and we have to have our vision. As life is short, eternity is forever. Matt, you know the paper I gave you on the Wall Street Journal says religion is on the decline as more adults check none. This is in America, mm-hmm. and that's no surprise. I mean, let's face it. <clears throat> Uh, statistically, by the time your your son or daughter becomes 23 years of age, I hope we're going to avoid... So far, none of my kids are in this boat, so thank you, Jesus, right. that they're not practicing their faith by the time they're 23, 88%. Wow, that's, that's a that's, sobering statistic. That, yes, and so here's the, here's <clears throat> the point. Only 45% of the adults polled in a Pew st- study say they attend church at least once a month. Now, that's Catholic, Protestant, whatever religion, it's going to church. Now, Religiosity in the U.S. is in a sharp decline, according to the study. Now, Christians make up, guess what, 65% of the U.S. population, according to the 2018-19 study. Now, that's down, Matt, from 77% just 10 years before. Wow. So, at the same time, those who don't identify with any religion, often known as the nuns we've heard about, now make up more than a quarter of the population, and that was compared to just 17% a decade ago. Only 45% of adults say they attend church at least once a month, and that's down from a decade ago from 52%. So it's all going down. The data is reflecting this social mode going on that it's a population shift away from Christianity, and I just say it's towards secular humanism. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting that back in the 90s, Tell me. Well, late, late 90s, like I, I converted in 96. Okay. So this, this is all, prior to that, this stuff really wasn't on my radar. Mm-hmm. But at that time, you know, late 90s, early 2000s, we had um, occasion to refer to checkbox Catholics. Oh, yeah. Right. Check that. That's a person who, <laughs> goes to the, when, you know, when he fills out a form and yeah. it says, what religion are you, he checks Catholic, even though... 
he doesn't go to church. Oh, my gosh. Right? You know, we would call them checkbox Catholics yeah. because they're not really practicing Catholics. But they still considered, they still had that identity. Yeah. They still considered themselves Catholics. Mm-hmm. Just saw a thing uh, about the Amazon Synod, and, and they were talking about priests. There was actually a bishop from Venezuela who said, we don't really have a priest shortage. You just need to uh, distribute them better. Mm-hmm. He says, because Rome is choked with priests. You know, why don't you just send some of them to the Amazon instead of trying to read, you know, change the tradition of the church? Sure. And it's like, and I'm going, it's like, well, let's, we need some more bishops like him. But um, the point being there, though, is that, you know, they talk about there's one priest for every 3,000 people in the United States, but that's based on 70 million Catholics. Well, not 70 million Catholics are going to church, not, not remotely. Like 20%. You know, it, so that ratio is actually much, of course. you know, uh, narrower than, than they portray it. Because the, those checkbox Catholics now, though, they're not checking the Catholic box anymore. They're checking under religion. They're checking the box that says none. Yep. Which means that that majority of the 70 million Catholics, a great many of them don't even consider themselves Catholic in any way anymore. It's a and, fact. That, and that's a huge trend. And, and more so in the last 10 years, right, than ever than before. We've seen the, those numbers shifting, but it's just like, you know, it's a tsunami. 12 points oh, in a right. decade. That's, yeah. that's, uh, that's remarkable. Absolutely. You know, and the other thing too. Tell me. Is, with all due respect, I know that Pew Research they're they're uh, secular, ecumenical, uh, yeah. or if you will. In other words, they don't. Yeah, they go across the board. Yeah, they're not coming from any particular uh, uh, standpoint. Mm-hmm. And so when they talk about religion, they're talking about all the various Christian denominations and Catholics and whatnot. But you know, for a Catholic, do you go to church once a month? Well, I hope that guy that's going to church once a month didn't receive in communion because he's, unless he's got a darn good reason, he's in mortal sin. Objectively, because because you have an obligation to go to church every single That's right. Sunday, every single no holy excuses. day. No excuses, unless well, unless there's unless oh, there's some genuine like impediment. It. Yeah, I know, I understand. You know, but yeah, hey, there it is. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the issues of the church, and also we're going to take some action regarding being proactive as Catholics to stand up for truth. Here at the Terry and Jesse Show, Matt Arnold and Terry Barber sitting in. It's Friday. We'll be back with much more to inspire you to fall deeper in love with Jesus Christ. Okay, and then we wait. Welcome, Daniel. You're on the line. What's on your mind, brother? Hi, I just wanted to share a testimony about Virgin Most Powerful Radio. I had a buddy at work who you know, he's a lukewarm Catholic guy, and I wanted him to start listening to the Terry and Jesse show, so I kept telling him to download the app, and he kept putting me off. So one day, I grabbed his phone, and I downloaded the app for him. I went on vacation, and you know, I kept telling him to listen to it. He was kind of put me off. I came back from vacation. He comes to my cubicle, and he says to me, Hey, man, I've been listening to the Terry and Jesse show, and it's great. And it's uh, made a big impact in his life. The guy, he's going to weekly adoration a couple times a wow. week. He goes to the Mass in the morning. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's an uh, on-fire Catholic, and he promotes uh, the Terry and Jesse show on the Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Wow. Daniel, what a testimony. And I want to encourage our listeners to get those cards by going to virginmostpowerfulradio.org and uh, do what Daniel's doing. Go out and spread the faith by inviting people to listen to Virgin Most Powerful. Daniel, thanks for your testimony, brother. God love you. You're welcome. Sirach 1124 says, Do not say I am self-sufficient. What harm can come to me now? According to St. Catherine of Siena, presumption is like vermin burrowing at the root of the tree of our soul. If we do not uproot it with great care and humility, it will eventually destroy the soul. May God keep us from all presumption of mind and heart, and realize that we depend on Him for everything. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites The Terry and Jesse Show, and they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, They will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, 
Call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back. It's not Terry and Jesse because it's Friday. Matt Arnold just stepped out and my good friend Richard Marshall, who is a Catholic convert from Calvary Chapel, and he's an on-fire Catholic. If you ever go to any of the events that we have, he's always my right-hand man running around doing things for me at the table. And Richard, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show, brother. Hey, good to be here, Terry. Rich, I want people to know something about California. We've been living here all our lives, most of our lives, and uh, Governor Newsom has and our governor right now, and he's been doing a lot of bad things that offend not just Catholics, but people of goodwill. Like, for example, he's advertising that people should come into our state for abortions because we're going to pay for them. He's also saying to people that um, uh, that if you're in college, we want the college kids to have access for an abortion at the at the college a room. So this is like costing a lot of money, but that's not the big thing. The big thing is he's a culture of death. And so we can sit back, Richard, and say, oh, well, what can I do? Richard, what can we do as concerned citizens? Can we do a recall to get rid of him? Yeah. In fact, uh, September 6th, a uh, recall was approved by the state of California Good. Secretary of State Recall of Gavin Newsom, mm-hmm. uh, Aaron Cruz, who ran against uh, Diane Feinstein the last election, uh, presented the Cruz. I mean, uh, presented the uh, petitions, mm-hmm. and they were approved. And uh, we're taking them all over the state of California Good. to get them signed. Good. We need a million and a half signatures yeah. by February 13th of next year. They've made it as hard for us as possible. Only three names on a petition. Uh, you cannot abbreviate anything. Yeah, they're, they're making it real tough. But people say, well, what's the reasons? Why do we want to get rid of him? Well, how about the highest taxes in the United States? How about the most homeless in the United States? How about him trying to get priests to give up what's what's Thank confessed you. in the confessions? How yep. about that? Mm-hmm. How about the highest gas tax yep. in the United States? How about the highest water tax in the United States? How about when you go to Vegas and you drive back and you see the sign coming back into California? The sign says, California, sanctuary state, highest corporate tax, 50 businesses a month. Small businesses are moving out of California. Also, for those Second Amendment rights, now we have to register ammunition, background check. Mm -hmm. As of four days ago, he's tried to pass eight new gun laws which includes some time of some type of confiscation of firearms mm-hmm. eventually. Mm-hmm. Now he wants to get rid of Prop thirteen. Now explain what Prop thirteen okay. back in nineteen seventy eight, I believe. Yes. Uh we the voters got together and we wanted to stop the state from uh doing too high of taxes on our property taxes every year. They kept going up mm-hmm. and we got, we got it through the uh, Jarvis Initiative. Howard Jarvis. To Howard Jarvis to hold at 2% a year. Yep. Now Gavin Newsom wants to get rid of that because he needs to triple that tax in order to raise more money because uh, he's going to do the medical for all the medical for the legals. In let, me, let me jump in for a minute. Can you picture your, your tax bill? You're going to be paying it right now. It's due in November. You probably got your statement now. And can you imagine if you're paying three, four thousand dollars a month that you'd be paying triple that, nine, ten thousand dollars a year? I, I just think that that's an outrage. But here's my point, Richard. It goes on and on. I want people to know how they can participate in stopping, you know, with the recall of the governor because he's doing so many bad things, especially morally, that offend us Christians. What can we do? Yeah, most, almost all Christians should be aware of what this uh, governor has been doing to this state. It is not the state that I grew up in. I came here in 1954 as a child. I've been here ever since. I've seen not just Governor Brown, but this governor now. We thought Brown was bad, but this governor, there's no comparison. And uh, he's been taking every day. He takes more of our rights away. And if you watch him on television... He smiles, and he gets this grin, and it's like, let's see you stop me. And it just irritates us. But all Christians, it's time 
to come out and vote and vote. It's signed to, it's time to sign this petition. Amen, brother. We can get this done. We're trying to get 800,000 by the end of October. Mm-hmm. That's half of what we need. 1,500,000 is what we need. We're going for 2 million because we know they're going to try to throw out at least 500,000. Well, so bottom line, Richard, at our events, uh, like, for example, here at the Sacred Heart Chapel, if people want to sign that petition, will you leave some of those petitions for us to sign? Yeah, those petitions are now at the church. Good. There are some people here that's been trained how to yeah. help you sign those petitions. Good. But as fast as you can get in to sign, you can sign here at Sacred Heart Chapel. Yep. Uh, I personally am San Bernardino. I have the petitions in three of the gun stores there. I am got ready to do uh, the Walmart and Redlands on the weekends. Yeah. So we're we're everywhere. We have uh, we're going to get this done. Uh, a, a lot of people are in prayer for this. Amen, brother. Yeah, God can do this, and we've got the faith that He will. Well, wonderful. And I just want to say the Johnson me- Amendment back in 1954 said that we couldn't do uh, what we just did. But thanks be to God, President Trump said, you know what? Amen. Amen. We're not going to implement that. So when people are saying, wait a minute, you're talking politics on a re- on a nonprofit. Yeah, we are. You know why? I'm tired of having Christianity being stepped on when it comes to our politicians, whether it's our priests being told they have to tell their, their confessions to uh, the, the public. No, to uh, the abortion situation. All these things are morally unacceptable, and now we can take action to stop all this. So yeah, we actually have Democrats, independents, and Republicans all signing this platform. Yeah. So this is not yeah, this, it's bipartisan. Yeah, it's bipartisan yep. for sure. Richard Marshall, I want to thank you for joining us. I'm going to ask you to go out and bring Matt back in. Uh, you're listening to the Terry and Jesse show here on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Rich, let Matt back in the seat now. Hey, thank you very much you for bet. having me, Terry. My pleasure. Come on in, Matt. Folks, we're here talking about lots of things that affect our families, especially our Catholic faith. And let's face it, the situation now in the Catholic Church is that we are being inundated with secular humanism. So as my headset gets kicked around and, you know what, it's not very graceful, but you know what, it's life. Matt, I wanted to just say this about uh, the situation politically. I was saying that the Johnson Amendment back in 1954 said that nonprofits cannot uh, talk about politics. Right. But President Trump is allowing us to do that now. And so we can talk about that and not worry. That's why some people might be a little uncomfortable what we just did. And I'm getting text after text saying that. Yes. <laughs> and so that's okay. Because you know what? Sitting back and doing nothing, that's when evil abounds. Matt, I wanted to come back on another topic. And I wanted mm-hmm. to take your take. Being a Catholic convert. Right. Uh, I, didn't, I can't hear. I don't think this. I think we might oh, have messed uh-oh. something up. But that's okay. I want to just say... You're a Catholic convert. I bring that up a lot because I'm a cradle Catholic. And you came into the church, I believe, 1996. 96, that's right. And I have a sense that sometimes for the last 40 or 50 years, we've been kind of lowering the bar in regards to teaching people about the faith and saying, well, we can't offend people, so Mm -hmm. let's don't talk about contraception or abortion because people wouldn't want to hear that from the pulpit. Right. But I want to understand... From your perspective, I mean, you were you had somewhat a little Christianity, you know, from your mom and dad with Christmas, and you guys would celebrate right, that. Right, yeah, we were generically Generic. Christian, if you will. But, yeah. but what did you think when you were con- considering being a Catholic when Well, even before that, came up? before, the, you know, uh, Betty and I yes. were married back in 91. Oh, okay, and, five years before that. Yeah, and so when I, I was married in the church, but I was not Catholic uh, at all, by in any, uh, you know, shape, manner, or form. Yeah. And but of course I had to go through the various instructions and whatnot in order to be married in the church, including the engaged encounter and these sure. you know various things. And one of the things that they um, that they uh, mandated that we do was attend a course in natural family planning. Yes. And you know I was not like I say not Catholic. I didn't really have uh, you know the whole mor- morality side of that didn't really enter into it for me. It wasn't even on the radar. 
And when we went to the Engaged Encounter and they taught us about natural family planning, it just made sense because it was approached, of course, from a Catholic standpoint of that, you know, contraception is, you know, you can't have in uh, a marriage, a marital act that isn't open to life because we're all about life. But there's also other reasons why contraception is a bad thing, including, the, you know, the, the scientific stuff that we know what, what the... Yeah, the chemicals pill, in the... Yeah, what, what the pill, for example, does to a woman's body. But also what it does to a marriage to say, well, you know, if, if this big major part of your marriage, if, you know, the, the marital act, which is mm-hmm. what marriage is about, yep. you know, it's, it's about the kids. That's what marriage is for. Yeah. And and so if you if you say well we're just gonna we're gonna be in control of that whether we like that or not or we're gonna do this and you know uh, that really bleeds into every part of your marriage, and every part of your marriage is like I as an individual need to have control over these things and not being entering into this covenantal relationship and that made sense even from a non-religious standpoint. Wow! So that didn't it, offend it, you at all. No, not only did it not offend me, it was probably one of the first steps that I took towards the Catholic Church. Even even the fact that we. You know, as a non-Catholic, I had to jump through all sorts of hoops. There's all sorts of red tape. Oh, yeah. But it's only because the Catholic Church takes marriage as serious as a heart attack. They say, you know, if you're going to stand up before literally God and everybody and swear to God mm-hmm. that you're going to do this forever, they want you to understand what you're getting into. Yeah. And, and, you know, <laughs> the entire world would really benefit from following that example. Matt, I've, over 40 years of talking to converts actively in my little ministry, the, what I've been involved with, I've heard that over and over again. You're not the first person to tell me that. Yeah, I thought I was completely unique. No, and Dr. Here we find Vaughn, out. <laughs> Ken Hensley was on our show today earlier in the network. All these people see what the Catholic Church or the perennial teachings of the church, okay? They're very attracting because it is the truth. It is, it is. And I'm not, I'm not Catholic because Catholicism makes sense, but it, but Catholicism makes sense. It sure does. You know, I mean, in fact, it it is the only completely cohesive and comprehensive worldview available. It's the only one that doesn't suffer from internal contradictions. Well, G.K. Chesterton said it this way, similar to what you said. <laughs> he said, "I'm not a I'm a Catholic because it's true." Yeah, that's there. It is. We talk. I talk about that all the time. That Catholics need to have. Um, at least what our um, what the fallen away Catholics have, which is a reason, you know, it's like you, you tell somebody, "Oh, I don't go to church anymore." Why? Well, they they'll give you an earful. Sure. But you say but when they turn around and say, "Why do you keep going?" You know, what are you going to say? And that's the, that's the the primary answer. Oh, I go to church. I believe in Catholicism because it's true. And you know, hard to argue against that. I agree. When we come back, we got Chad Stewart on the line. He's going to be talking about how he has influenced public schools. I mean, many of us know that the public school systems are giving us a bunch of baloney. Mm-hmm. Actually, not just baloney, but bad formation yeah, bad that baloney. attacks Christianity. <laughs> Here's a man who's doing something positive to help Christians stand up in a secular world. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show on Virgin Most Powerful. Matt Arnold's with me. We'll be right back. We have an exciting story for you to listen to, the story of John Pridmore. John Pridmore was a hitman for the gangs in East London. I met some guys who seemed to have everything that I thought would make you happy. So I started working for these people, so to my shame I was involved in vicious crime of all sorts. He collected debts for the gangs, and if people didn't pay their debts, it was his job to kill them. And as I drove home that night, I thought, what have I become that I could kill someone and not even care? He was in the elevator on his way up to the 17th floor, and there was a 17-year-old young man in the elevator with him. Suddenly, this young man looked John right in the eye, and he said, Jesus loves you. And I said the first prayer I'd ever said. I said, up to now, all I've done is take from you, God. Now I want to give. Within a year, by the grace of God, John was able to get out of the gang and be freed from this road to hell that he had been walking on. Go to Virgin Most Powerful YouTube channel and listen to this story today. This is Terry Barber. I want to invite you to take advantage of having your funeral or your loved one's funeral at the Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. It's a 115-year-old church, beautiful chapel. 
And all you got to do is call me at 661-972-7872, and I'll personally make the arrangements with your mortuary to have your funeral or your loved one's funeral here at Sacred Heart Chapel. You won't regret it. 661-972-7872. God love you. Buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. I like to say we're too blessed to be stressed, too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires, right? Amen. Matt Arnold is sitting in for Jess Romero. It's Friday. Normally, I talk about the passion of Christ and how the value of the saving blood of Jesus Christ is on our for us on Fridays we always commemorate that because of Good Friday but I have a friend Chad Stewart who's been on our show before he's a man who's doing great work inside the public school systems this guy's all over the place and he's trying to bring in a curriculum and I want to talk first about that Chad because this is important that we Christians step up to the plate so Chad welcome to the Terry and Jesse show brother Oh, thank you, Terry. I'm glad to be back, and I'm uh, talking to you live from uh, uh, the mountains in Colorado. Oh, my gosh. Oh, <laughs> when I say you're all over, you are. <laughs> yeah. Chad, Chad, I want to set the stage for our folks. Be- yeah. Tell them a little bit, because I assume nobody knows who you are. It's been months sure. since uh, we've chatted. That's just a principle sure. I always use. Give us a little background, and especially what I remember about you uh, that impressed me is your zeal for the faith and how you're trying to make a difference in the public schools. So can you kind of share sure. with our listeners a little background? Yeah, I'll give a quick overview. Um, uh, born and raised in uh, Newport Beach, uh, uh, <laughs> California. I was back east for 16 years. And uh, 10 years ago is when I had an idea for a book and a book series mm-hmm. called Britfield and Lost Crown. And so, uh, t- you know, 10 years later, if you can imagine, from, from idea and concept to reality, wow. uh, we launched Britfield and Lost Crown, which is part of a seven-book series. And we launched it in August uh, of this year and uh, have really kind of built a great team around it and our, our massive school tour. And really, we call it a movement. Uh, we, we say that Britfield's more than a book. It's a movement, which we can dig into. And uh, it's been a real blessing. I mean, um, well, tell us. Uh, if, all goes, if all goes well, by, by November, we, we, we would be within um, uh, best-selling status as far as a bestseller. Wow. We 11, 11 national and international awards. We won a gold medal first place for Parents' Choice Award. I love it. Lost Crown. So, so lots of blessings, lots of praise reports, to say the least. And again, to uh, <laughs> give all the, the glory to God, I, I, I've been out of the uh, driver's seat for a while, right? Because I'll, mm-hmm. I'll only crash it and mess it up. <laughs> so, uh, I love you your stuff. But uh, t- t- tell our yeah. listeners about the curriculum, cause, curriculum and how they can get it, too, because I want them sure. to know uh, how they can actually get these books, because I know they're inspirational. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's it's exciting. So we we kicked off. I mean, we have a lot of different sort of strategies and marketing as we're rolling out off across the nation with Britfield and our Britfield tour, and then and then next year will be international. But we we put the school tour together. And Terry, if you can imagine, so far I've been to seventy nine schools. Wow! And have spoken spoken to about nine thousand students. Praise in God! In spring, now it's just kind of doing. I was reflecting on that the other morning. I'm like, wow, that's. That is a lot of people, you know, <laughs> and um, and so yeah, so we come in and we come in as an award-winning author because obviously it's a great way to come into the school, especially on the public side. Yes, but really, I only talk about the book for about maybe ten percent of the talk. I come in with creativity and pushing creativity as as as, as being so important. Yes. So really, <clears throat> it's a creativity tour and trying to get creativity back into the classroom, mm-hmm. back into the uh, curriculum, and obviously incorporating Britfield, you know, in that mix, and then just talking about 
creativity, talking about the duration of having an idea, the importance of having an idea. I love it, especially at the uh, Christian or Catholic schools. We've been to a ton of Catholic schools, and mm-hmm. they've all been fantastic. They're always very welcoming. The kids are fantastic, and Good. students have tons of questions. So, um, so kudos. <laughs> Chad, just but, uh, the, the follow-up yeah. I have on that book is, uh, do you also reach out to, because uh, we have a, a large audience of homeschooling families. Can they also oh, benefit from this? Absolutely. In fact, we've been we've been kind of um, working away at that for the last three to four months on the homeschool market, uh, working with some of the largest homeschool platforms. Good. Um, yeah, and then uh, we also did uh, we had uh, 75 um, blog homeschool blog reviewers do a review on Brickfield Lost Crown, and again, um, most of the time it just stellar reviews. So we've really kind of we've really impacted it. We've emailed a lot of these, I mean, hundreds of thousands of homeschoolers wow. with the with the free study guide. Mm-hmm. And what we have is we, we really have, we have two study guides. We have um, an 83 page study guide based on Britfield Lost Crown, based on national standards, uh, $30 value. We always offer it to teachers and schools for free. And then we have the faith-based study guide for Catholic or Christian schools, mm-hmm. uh, which is kind of neat because it's like, you can read through the book and you have the sort of national standards, the, the quizzes, um, you know, the, the, the character arcs, all the type of things that you would want in an enriched book. That's just really designed to be taught in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you can go deeper after that kind of chapter into the into the faith aspects. And, and uh, because, awesome. again, Britain and Lost Crown written by a Christian based on biblical beliefs and stuff. So I love although it. Our, mm-hmm. our audience is a mainstream audience, why, but why preach the, to, to, the, to the choir? We're trying to take back <laughs> our youth's minds, to say Good. the least. And we're trying to really impact and revolutionize uh, uh, education. It's not a broken model. It's over. It's done. It's dust. I mean, to me, Common Core was the last nail in the coffin. Amen. Mm-hmm. Just to undermine kids' minds and make them do 50 different steps to get one plus one equals two. It's pathetic. Right. And, like and it's all by design. Let's let's not make mistakes here. Billions of dollars have been spent by those, you know, to destroy the uh, the educational system. And so they not only need to be held accountable, but the point is, is instead of complaining about it, let's fix it. And so that's what we're doing. And wow. this is a 40 plus state tour over the next 16 years. By the time I'm done, I would have talked to about 30 to, to 40,000 children and, and thousands of teachers. And, um, and, and, then, and then also just providing them the resources, you know, to bring not just Brickfield in, into, the, into the classroom um, to teach it as, as, a, as a guide, but also the study guide, uh, but also a lot of different kind of models that we're working on um, and bring creativity back into it. We've, we created the Brickfield Institute, which is our not-for-profit side. Mm-hmm. And that's literally where, if you can imagine, we have about 150,000 teachers nationwide that we've been sort of contacting twice a, week, twice a month, sometimes three times a month. And always offering them a gift. Um, our Art. first giveaway was like is like 30, 31 um, creative exercises to bring into the classroom, and we made it into an ebook, a free giveaway. I love um, it. 11, 11 creativity games to do in the classroom. Um, Fifty four creative quotes, and they're all based on a really cool picture in the background that they can print out and put up in the classroom. And we're just we've been building this these, this this you know um, resources and just offering it to teachers for free. Uh, not asking anything in return, but really, you know, just impacting them and just saying, I mean, if you bring in one create, create creative exercise, let's just say once a month for an hour, you change the entire dynamics of that entire classroom and the dynamics of those children and, and even their brain chemistry. And and, and we don't mm-hmm. have time to get into the science. I love it. Right. But, but uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's yes. all there. Everything about creativity is amazing, you know, and, and what it does. And, and sometimes it's, it's that kind of flashover substance, touchy-feely. Oh, yeah, it's good that my kid does some creatives. No, I'm telling you right now, based on research in the next five to ten years, creativity will be the single most desired skill set in the nation, if not the world. And I can back it up if we had an hour with stats all across the board. Everything mm-hmm. from the World Economic Forum that says that creativity will be one of three of the most important skills by 2020 – to, a, to an IBM report of 1,500 CEOs that said creativity is the number one leadership quality of the future. Makes sense. To the yeah. fact that Adobe did a research and says that creative applicants are preferred five to one. Yep. And that this year, LinkedIn, if you can imagine, said the number one most desired skill set, this is from LinkedIn, across all, across all worldwide, was mm-hmm. creativity. Right. Yeah. So I don't make this stuff up. Right. <laughs> you know, Chad, uh, a lot of, uh, Matthew Arnold here, by the way. Uh, oh, nice to meet you. Matthew. Yeah, sure. Nice to meet you. Um, <laughs> But I, I like what you're saying, and, and part of it is, as as you're talking, uh, some of these things, some of these concepts are not really new. I mean, there there are things that yeah. were that were a part of classic education that got pushed Absolutely. to the to the side, and really, so what I see you guys doing, it's not so much a revolution uh, in in, in a way as a, as a restoration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, yeah. that there are things that uh, our children were kind of deprived of 
that, yeah. uh, and especially the the Judeo Christian worldview. Mm. I mean, it still informs us in in you know cultural ways, but uh, the the specifics of it have been ignored for a long time. Yeah, and you're absolutely right. It's like it's 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 like it's like a diet, you know what I mean? And it's just like you know, like 20 years ago, when 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 fruit and vegetables and and, and be you know were good for you, and all of a sudden you get into the junk food, it's like I'm just trying to bring you back to the fruits and vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> good analogy. Well done. Just, well done. Yeah. So I didn't invent the fruits and vegetables. I'm not redefining the fruits and vegetables. I'm just saying look, that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. the best for your body, and it's gonna you're gonna get the best life and the most rewarding life, and 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 that's really what creativity is, and it's it helps with depression, it helps with stress. And it does all these types of things, and um, and the dynamics is just incredible. And it and it can be just a simple exercise. And, and if we have time, I can I can dig into some of the some of the stuff we've done, some of the workshops. We could talk a little bit about the book tour and the presentations. But just just to give you a mindset, I, I can I can hold an audience of of sixth graders, two hundred and forty, uh, for an hour, and I'm oh. still doing Q and A with them, and we have to cut it off. Awesome. Oh, wow. Hey, I want so, you to do that after the break, Chad, sure. please, because sure. I want people to know how to get a hold of you. What website can they can you send us to, the, our listeners, so that they can get more oh, information? Absolutely. Um, I, just go right to Britfield. It's B-R-I-T-F-I-E-L-D, Britfield.com. And uh, that's really fun because that's that's um, that's all about the book and, and the interaction and 400 pictures of where the book awesome. takes place. But then you can also go to the Britfield Institute. That has tons of information, tons Good. of resources. So BritfieldInstitute.org. Great. I want to just make a little plug about the Sacred Heart Chapel now, folks, before we go for a break. Many of you come for our conferences. Right now, we're redoing the floors, the hardwood floors. We're restoring this 115-year-old church to the original state of what it was when it was built. It's not cheap. And when we we opened up off uh, the carpet, found out that we had some extra expenses, we would like to ask you if you're in a position to make a one-time donation. I'm going to give you my cell number because I want to personally thank you. You can call me at 661-972-7872. If you want to do it anonymously and say, I don't want to talk to you, Terry, go to the website, virginmostpowerfulradio.org, and say, I'd like to help out with the chapel restoration. This chapel, we want to have it here another 100 years when we're gone, we want to pass on our faith. This is a beautiful Sacred Heart Chapel in downtown Covina. We would love to have you participate. We've got the new roof. We've got the communion rails. We've got the tile in the sanctuary. All because you've been helping us do it. And now we're doing the hardwood floors in the main body of the church. And if you want to help us, call me at 877-526-2151. Or I even give you my cell, 661 972 Seven eight seven two. And Matthew, I want to remind everybody, in November, we have the Stations of the Cross picking up our show. And I love this one station in Boston. It's 50,000 watts. Mm-hmm. It covers most of New England. And uh, we're going to start sometime in November, so it's right around the corner. Right. And we couldn't do it without our listeners. True. So I just want to thank all the monthly donors. I'd love to thank you every day for that, because that's how we pay our monthly bills. When we right. come back... We're going to talk to Chad Stewart regarding some formation from the public schools that he's doing in education. He's got zeal, and I love that. He's got, <laughs> he's got good knowledge about how to have our kids really think rather than react. You're listening to The Terry and Jesse Show. Matt Arnold sitting in for Jess Romero. Hey, we'll be right back with much more. Get yourself a cup of coffee. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Terry Barber. I want to share with you a wonderful program called The Legacy of Love and Devotion. Well, what is it? Well, it's where you share your life and love of your Catholic faith with your family for the next century and beyond. Let's face it. Our Lord is going to call you home at some time. And how are you going to evangelize your relatives in the future? Well, by coming into my studio by a telephone call and telling your story of how you love Jesus and Mary and the church and giving information to your great-grandchildren and beyond their love for the Catholic faith. How does it work? I'm going to tell you more if you call me on my cell phone, 661-972-7872, and I'll give you all the details of how you can pass on your Catholic faith to the next generation and the following generations. It's a very unique program. I want to tell you more about it. Call me at 661-972-7872. God love you.
buying or selling your home or your business property? This is Terry Barber. Real Estate for Life underwrites the Terry and Jesse Show. And they can connect you to one of 900 pro-life real estate agents around the world. And when they receive their referral fee, they will give 80% of it to a pro-life organization. Wow, that's 80%. Realestateforlife.org, 877-LIFE-US-1. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. I'm getting text after text saying, hey, Terry, <laughs> can you uh, share the uh, recall for Governor Newsom petition so I can get him out of my church? Uh, I love it. I'll do my best. I just know we have him here at the Sacred Heart Chapel. What I like about Catholics and Christians joining together to spread the, you know, to to really right. speak up against the secular world is that we're taking action now. Right. Yeah. It's it's uh, uh, we're stronger together. Yep. Right? Yep. Yep. And we have our good friend Chad Stewart out in Colorado. He goes all over the country, going into the public school systems. And let me just set something up, Chad, that, and then I'll let you take it from there. Sure. Many times I talk to my Christian, Catholic and Christian school teachers, and they go, man, we are so upset with what's going on. They're pushing this secular humanism into my curriculum. What can I do? You know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm compromising my right. principles. And they often feel powerless. And they felt powerless. Yeah. What would you tell them, Chad? Yeah, that's a tough position, and I really feel for it. And, and let's, um, let's go a step further. Go ahead, talk brother. about Christians that are in the public. You know, yeah. and there's quite a few Christians that are teaching in the public school. Right. And um, it's really tough. And it's, I, I think each situation is, is really um, individual. And what I mean by that is it's, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's your walk with God. It's your understanding with God. It's, it's taking the time to pray through. And, and, and I know, Terry, we talked earlier. And it's like <laughs> they just walk out and quit and say, you know what? Enough is enough. And I'm not doing this stuff, yeah. which on one side, absolutely. God yeah. will honor that. And God will God will find you a better position. And right. on the other side of it, does God want you there longer? And can he use you? And I tell you something right now. You will accomplish more through prayer, you know, dedicated, committed prayer for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Get mm -hmm. a prayer core together. Get a prayer group and pray on this Amen. and move it because that will move God's hand more than, you know, 10,000 hours of your time and effort. And I'm, I, I'm just telling you. I'm with you. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I, I live in prayer. I'm, I'm all for prayer. I mean, Scripture, absolutely, and, and fellowship and all those things. But there's a great book, real quick, got to get off tough topic, but I was... Mm -hmm. uh, That's okay. Uh, it was t like 20, 30 years ago, when I just became a Christian, I was saved at 22, mm -hmm. and uh, I was in this uh, castle, of, of all things, in uh, Milstadt, Austria, oh my God. <clears throat> through Calvary Chapel, and they were they were turning it. It used to actually be a, um, a Nazi SS. Oh my goodness. And, uh, and, and the first thing they had to paint over was the Aryan uh, family that was on the, on the front of the castle. It was kind of interesting. Uh -huh. But a gentleman had, had con introduced me to this book, and I think it's called The Kneeling Christian. And you could probably still get it out there. It's out of print and paperback. And it said, it said God, God mocks your fellowship, laughs, laughs when you sing or read Scripture, but trembles when you pray. I and love I, that. I, and, that. And I'm kind of paraphrasing, but that always I stuck with me, that, that the devil trembles yep. when you pray. Right. Yep. Yep. So well, I, I also the devil laughing when we sing. I'm pretty sure that that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. Chad, one more time, because I only got like two or three minutes left with yeah. you because I want to give our five stone program again. Yeah. How can people get in touch with you and all of your good work that you're doing with your book programs? And right. I, yes, I'm, I'm in, the, you know, the uh, XYZ school district, and yeah. I would love to have you come and address yeah. Uh, the teachers there. Yeah, I, I think contacting us through um, our Britfield website, I think it's info at Britfield.com. So, you know, uh, contacting us through Britfield website, do just a, a Google search of Britfield and you'll see mm -hmm. uh, just the amazing uh, work that we've been doing, other interviews, um, uh, tons of blogs, tons of, tons of write up on the book. I mean, I think what's great about the book or Britfield Lost Crown is that it's not only a fast paced you know, adventure story that your child will love to read. It's based on biblical principles. It's based in current time. And dare I say, it's educational. And they'll actually read our book and, and learn about education and, and history, culture, uh, geography, all those kind of things. And so again, so I'm not just kind of coming into a school and incorporating Britfield, but at the core of Britfield really is the four C's of creativity. It's cre creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. And that's literally what 
I mean, it's like in all these other stories and all the other fiction that they're pushing, it's all the nonsense of waving a wand or saying a spell to get yourself out of a bind. And it's like, yeah, that's a right. disconnect from reality. And Terry, if we come back on Halloween, uh, you know, uh, 31st, yeah. I'd love to dig real deep into that and, and pull right. the curtain and go behind the scenes. And what was Harry Potter really designed to do and who really wrote it? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Book. Well, because uh, we know, you know, anyone on the on the know or this on the research, it was not the the struggling little divorced woman. You got that right. Out, you know what I mean. So you got to chat. Well, Chad, I want to just thank you again. I I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate your zeal and your love for Jesus Christ because it comes across also, and Amen. your commitment to you know, doing what you're doing. And I just want to say thanks, and we will definitely have you back here at the Terry and Jesse Show. Right. Yeah, I appreciate it. And pray, uh, those out there, just pray for us. Pray for our tour. You got our it, partner. Tour, pray for the book and stuff. We need, we need that. So. You got it. Thanks right. again, Chad. Right. God love you and your family. All right. So BritfieldInstitute.org That's or right. Britfield.com. That's right. Perfect. You got it, partner. God love you. All right. Matthew, I'd love to end our shows with the five stones of David. And before I do that, I want to also plug that when we're done— you come on for an hour. Now, yes. you've got my attention right now because I know what you're going to be speaking on. Yes. I have to go to Costco and get things you know, <laughs> while you're doing your show, but I'm going to be listening because... Yeah, there's, luckily you've got the app on your phone. Yeah, right? what, are you, what, are you being, what are you talking about? Well, of course, we always do the readings for the upcoming Sunday in the Extraordinary, Extraordinary Form, form yeah. so uh, 19th after Pentecost, but, and that's you know, super interesting, as always. Mm-hmm. But uh, our topic after the readings is seven passages from Vatican II that every Catholic needs to know. And I love that because so many Catholics, back in the 80s, I put those documents on cassette tape. Do you everybody remember cassette tapes? Yeah. <laughs> Very well I do. indeed. I'm uh, sorry some of the younger that. people wouldn't know what yeah. I'm talking about. So, yeah, I, I, I saw a great uh, uh, meme the other day. It was a pencil and a cassette tape, and it said, Today's kids will not make the connection. <laughs> <laughs> well, and also I want to mention Father Fessio, who was on this week, Yes. With the Adoramus.org organization, he's coming on the 14th of March, and registrations are up. So yes. if yeah, you can go to the website and go to, the, go to virginmostpowerfulradio.org, and there's several other national speakers coming to the Sacred Heart Chapel, and the topic is on the Easter Tritium. Mm. And that's it, man. I mean, yeah. you've been to the Tritium, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and uh, Holy, Holy Saturday. Saturday. Wow, you got it all. All those good readings. I think there's like 14 readings. I was mm-hmm. <laughs> like, What? And well, we're going to talk about the liturgy because I'm convinced the way you worship is the way you believe. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, uh, mm-hmm. the, the way you pray, the way you believe, it's also the way you will act, right? Creeds, of course. Creeds come before deeds. As and, we say. and, you know, that's one of the reasons I think we're in a mess right now in our church. I'll be honest with you. I think that our prayer life has gone south as a church because secular humanism has come in. And I demonstrate that earlier in the show from the Wall Street Journal article about mm-hmm. religion and how, you know, only 20 percent of the Catholics, if that, are going to Sunday mass. That's tragic, in my opinion. OK, mm-hmm. and I'm sad for that. But I really believe even the Amazon Senate that's happening in Rome. When I think about what's going on and they're saying we need to be more with the um Set with the tribes of of of, in, of the Amazon, mm-hmm. and we can learn from these people. I always I wrote this down in my holy hour this morning. I said, you know, we're not interested in cultures generally. I mean, we accept them, and if they're what what good they have, we accept mm-hmm. it. But we're more inter- interested in saving souls. And I think in fifty years down in South America, what's demonstrated to me is this approach. Of enculturation. I'm going to say something, so and saying. I'm going to preface it. Uh-oh. You always say that we like to, uh, um, when we speak, we uh. speak with clarity and, and charity. I'm trying charity. to be charitable, Matt. And you, you try and be charitable, and and of course, uh, admonish the sinner is a, is an act of absolutely uh, a, a charitable act. Of course, right? of course. Real love means to, Tell telling the truth. It like, telling it what? It, yeah. So um, <clears throat> I, I will throw uh, in I my own. Sit down. My own axiom is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the price of clarity is the risk of insult. That's right, man. And, you know, it's like I don't say this well to said. offend anyone. Well said. But it needs to be said. The Catholic Church does not, you know, and this is right in the Catechism. It's in, you know, Unitatis Retentio Gratio and, and, you know, the documents of Vatican II that we're going to be talking about. <laughs> um, that... The Catholic Church rejects nothing that's true. 
in other religions or in other cultures. We, we embrace everything that's true. That's right. Uh, but I would say that, you know, if we're talking about a religious truth, it is one that we already have in its fullness. That's right, Matt. Frankly, the only thing that these, that uh, some pagan religion has to offer the church that we don't already have is error. And that's the one thing we don't need. I wish you would have really told me what you think. <laughs> and, and you know what, Matt? I know I'm going to sound a little out of bounds, but I want to give our... I don't believe error has any rights. Okay? Right. And, and, and I'm, I'm being honest with you, and I say that because we're here to give the people the truth of the gospel. And if for thousands of years the, the church has done this, we haven't worried about offending people we've tried to tell them look this is the way to live well i'll tell you right now my, my viking ancestors oh there you go we're not offended by people coming into their into their uh, enclaves of of uh, northern paganism and offering them the hope of the gospel amen brother hey the five stones that we end with we've got another minute here five stones matt why do we do this because of uh, david and goliath and he had the five stones well, we have five stones spiritually. Here's your action items for the weekend, folks. Here it is. Friday, make a sacrifice, whether it's uh, helping the poor, uh, uh, sacrificing food, no extra meat. Extra prayers. Extra prayers. Go out and help someone. The rosary, daily rosary. That's another stone that we have to have if we're going to save our souls. And also, I might add, the souls of our family. Amen. Go to Mass as often as possible. Get the confession at least once a month. Matt, I'm a sinner. I go twice a month, every other week, and then, if necessary, more often. <laughs> <laughs> read. We're talking about that a little bit, too, in, yeah. in the readings coming up Good. for Pentecost. And then, of course, read your yeah, Bible Pentecost. every day. Now, here at the Terry and Jesse Show, if you listen every day, we read the gospel reading of the Daily Mass in the ordinary form. And, but that doesn't mean you can't read your Bible at home. Mm-hmm. In addition, because there's indulgences attached to it. Sure. I mean, we're talking about... It's good for you. Food. Yes. Good for what ails you. So these five stones is what we're asking you to do. Matt, tell us right now, we have a minute left. What are you going to share with our listeners? I want everybody to stay <clears throat> tuned to this next hour. Well, you know, um, have you ever you know, gone to Mass or mm-hmm. been in a classroom or, or some church ministry meeting yep. and wondered, you know, where did that come from? Of right? course. So it comes up and then maybe you... Uh, you know, the people tell you, oh, it's in Vatican too," Or maybe something didn't seem right. And you say, well, wait a second, that doesn't seem right. And you, and you bring up, isn't this the teaching of the church? Oh, that went out with Vatican too. Yeah. But how many of us have actually read those documents? How many of us actually know what's even in Vatican II? Small amount. You know, I knew. Forewarned is forearmed. So we're going to be talking about seven things that you need to know. Uh, quotes taken directly from the documents of the Second Vatican. Council. I'm excited. Hey, Matt, what state should we be living in, brother? That, my friend, would be the state of grace. And what state shouldn't we be living in, even in for a second? Even for a second. want to stay out of mortal sin. Yes. Yeah. And that's why if you're waiting for someone to ask you to go to confession, that's me! (laughs) Go to confession, it's good for your soul. Hey, I want to thank all of you here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. You've been so good to us. And, you know, if you haven't had a chance, any of those who haven't made a donation, we could use it now. We're restoring restoring our Sacred Heart Chapel. Call us. Call me at my cell number, 661-972-7872. Maybe you got a bonus and a big commission sale. Send some of it our way. (laughs) May God richly bless you. And Matt Arnold is up next, and he's going to be talking about the Vatican II documents. We'll be right back. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole Church, grant it love and the light of thy Spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great High Priest, May the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin Most Powerful, pray for us.